Summer break is almost here, and you may be looking for some activities to fill your family's free time. Two traveling Van Gogh art exhibits are coming to town, and they're creating quite a buzz. And not all of it's positive. Madison spoke with the producers of both shows and has more about the confusion surrounding them both. Madison. Yeah, so Karen, they both have similar names, similar websites, and similar experiences where guests are meant to feel truly immersed in Van Gogh's art. But that's making it difficult for people to know which show they're actually buying tickets to. The immersive Van Gogh exhibit coming to Dallas in June is created by Massimiliano Sicardi. And Massimiliano Sicardi is, in my opinion, at least the Steven Spielberg of, of these animated installation art pieces. He's been doing it for 30 years in Europe. Millions of people have seen his shows in Europe, and we're very excited to be bringing his work to North America and to Dallas for the first time. It boasts 500,000 cubic feet of projections animating Vincent Van Gogh's works. So every surface that you see, the floors, the brickwork, the columns, all of it is illuminated with Van Gogh's art, and industrial type spaces start to transform with organic images of Van Gogh, like sunflowers and clouds and, and stars. You're completely enveloped and surrounded by the art, so it's very cool. If you dress in white, it's on your clothes even. And then there's Van Gogh, the immersive experience, coming to Dallas in August. You know, we want to, them to understand and appreciate the artist. Uh, even if they don't know anything about the artist before they came. They showcase Van Gogh's work using 10,000 square feet of screens and projections and illustrate his life through virtual reality. For example, we recreate his famous bedroom and so people can walk into his bedroom and, and feel where he was. And so people get a feeling, a little bit of feeling about the artist. And then when they walk into the immersive, they've got, they've got some context with the visuals that they're going to see. Both shows have websites and characteristics that are hard to differentiate. Certainly we're hearing from a lot of customers who have, who have been confused, particularly in New York, but also in, in other cities. Uh, it's really disappointing to me that they have a uh, similar name to ours. And the Better Business Bureau says this is a prime example of when buyers need to do their homework before purchasing tickets. I know we feel in, the, in these situations a sense of urgency because we don't want to miss out. So doing your research ahead of time is really important. Check at BBB.org to see what kind of ratings those companies have. Uh, look at other customer reviews. That's going to let you know if there have been issues in the past. I think a little bit of Google Googling would, would uh, reveal that uh, the other parties being, uh, you know, has a number of Better Business Bureau complaints um, against them, and we don't. But Iacompo says those complaints have to do with the company that handles its ticketing, not the show itself, and that the production company behind the show is committed to honoring all tickets that are sold. Now, both producers told us that they will be honoring refunds if you accidentally purchase tickets to the wrong show. However, looking at both websites, their posted refund policies both state that tickets are non-refundable. So if you want an added layer of protection in the event that you do need to ask for your money back, the BBB recommends paying with a credit card. That way, if you need to dispute a charge, it's much easier, Karen, to get those charges reversed. Isn't that the truth? All right, Madison, thank you very much. That was a great story. Interesting information.